Hello, this is Mr. Craig. Uh, this is day 118, um, part B of nuclear chemistry, and I plan on making two videos for day 118. Uh, the theme for today is half-lives. Uh, we talked about half-lives in kinetics, and for all practical purposes in nuclear chemistry, it has the same meaning. When we talk about half-life, it's the amount of time that it takes for half of the material to change. Now, when we talk about nuclear reactions, we're looking at a radioactive decay process that's taking place. So it's the amount of time that it takes for half of the nuclear material to change into something new. Um, don't worry about how much we actually start with, unless the question actually says that. But do realize that if we had, say, 100 grams or a tenth of a gram, the amount of time for half of that material to change would be the same regardless of how much we had. Um, also, for all nuclear reactions, and I don't know if I have it anywhere in the notes here, but it is a, oh, there it is, it is a first order reaction. So when we talk about working out the calculations or what, which equation we need to use, um, make sure that we're using the correct one for first order reactions. And I think the, this video I may have some of those equations that I'll use in the natural log equation, and we'll have a chance to use that here shortly. All right, here's a graphic that actually does a nice job of representing, again, uh, the half-life processes. And it looks like we're starting off with t a 10-gram sample here. And as we would expect, after one half-life, you should have about 5 grams. And then after a second half-life, you'll have half of that, which should be around 2.5, and, and so on and so forth. So we get this nice, nice sloping deceleration curve here. And do recall or recognize that the amount of time for all these half-lives happen to be the same. So regardless of how much of the material we have, the amount of time that it takes for half of that material to decay or to change uh, is consistent. Alright, uh, let's see. This equation here is not on your equation sheet, but oftentimes it is a real quick uh, time saver. And what this is saying is if we look at mass at some at t here, that's at some point in time. So some point in time, mass at zero is our initial amount. So if I know initially how much I have, that's kind of nice. Uh, the 0.5, well, represents half. And then the n here represents how many half-lives. So the number of half-lives here. So again, mass at t is some mass amount at any given point in time. 0 is the initial, 0.5 is just our quote-unquote multiplier, and our n to the n power here is our number of half-lives. I think we'll get to do, represent this or use this in the first problem here. Now, also do recall that when we're working with any of these problems, since they are first-order reactions, you do have the option of using the equation that's on the equation sheet that has this equation. And again, don't get hung up that, yeah, I know it says concentrations. Uh, but again, it's talking about the amount of material that we actually have. Um, I just want to refresh your memory on this. What this is saying is we're taking the natural log of the concentration at some point in time minus the, the natural log of the concentration that we initially had is equal to the negative K. Again, recall that when we take the natural log versus time, we get a nice negative slope. So we have this negative sign here, and our k, again, is our slope. And t is our time. So this equation is always available for you, um, but use what you need. And again, it doesn't matter what you're using just as long as you're showing your process and you're showing all of your steps. What you don't want to do, especially as we get closer here to the AP exam, is that you're like, oh, I know exactly what to do. So I'm not going to show any work and I'm just going to type all the answers out or type all the work out on the calculator and then come up with an answer. Well, you know what? You're not going to get any points if you do that. So if you just wrote down your answer, 213 grams, you're not going to get any point for, or any points for showing your work. So always, always, always show your process. Always show what you're doing. Don't ever, ever let the grader question what you're doing. All right, so let's take a look at the first question here. It says that after 150 days, 
The question wants to know what is the mass of the sample of a certain substance with an initial mass of 100 grams with a half-life of 27 days? Yes, I know the answer is right there at 2.13. All right, this would be a great time to use this equation here where we have the mass at some point in time, because that's what we're looking for, is equal to the mass initially, so 0, uh, times 0.5 to the nth power. Now we have to solve for n. We know what this is, we know what our initial amount is, but we have to solve for n. So a little sidebar here, n is equal to the, the total time over your half-life period of time. So if we know the total time, which in this case is 150 days, and we know our half-life is 27 days, then that'll tell us how many half-lives have actually taken place. And on my calculator it says 5.5, and that's repeating. Alright, so we know what our, our number of half-lives is, so to find out this value here, We'll start off with our 100 grams, and then we're going to multiply that times 0.5, and our power will be 5.5 repeating. Now, your calculator, again, you have this number in your calculator. That would be very wise for you to learn how to use this calculator without having to retype everything. So when I type all this in, 100 times 0.5, so I go 100 times 0.5, then use your caret button. Do not do not use your EXP or EE button. This would be a very bad time to do that. And then hopefully you have a calculator that says has an answer button. So type that in because you already have that in your answer. And then you should get somewhere around 2.126 grams. Okay? Now, that's one way of working this problem out. Now again, if you need to see that, just rewind this. Um, but you could have used the other equation um, that I had, the natural logs up there. So if you wanted to use this, this would be a great time to do this. Um, I'm not going to show the other process because it uses anti-natural log. But again, we did do that in class earlier with kinetics. So if you need to see that, go and check out the answers online there. I'm trying to give you the fastest way because I think the other way is a little more time consuming, but it's it's okay if you want to use that. Just realize that with the AP exam you're going to be racing against the clock. All right, so let's see here. Um, the next example, let me scroll down here. Clear that off, give us some room. Uh, it says, and it says on here, after part two explanation. All part two explanation is dealing with is using the natural log um, for our that we used in kinetics. So question is, how many half-lives have elapsed if a substance with an initial mass of 100 grams currently has a mass of 33 grams after 40 minutes? All right, well, remember that when we, whenever we use the equation, the natural log, we have to find out what our k is. Now, I'm going to clean up the equation by taking are using this equation here. And I think some of you may remember me using this, and that's fine. If you want to use the other one, that's quite all right. Uh, this is just a little bit cleaner. All right, so we know everything except for k for this situation. So we have to find out what the k is so we can find out how many half-lives have elapsed because we don't know how many half-lives have elapsed at this point. So let's go ahead and plug in our values here. Um, actually, let's rearrange this so that we get our uh, equation set up. So we'll have natural log of AT over the initial is equal to, and I'm going to make it just K, and I'm going to bring the negative T down here. Okay, so now I have natural log of 33. That's how much we have. And we started with 100 grams. And my time was 40 minutes. There it is. Let's scoot that down just a hair. 40 minutes. 
Africa. So when I type all of that in, I get a K value. Where's my K at? Oh, grab a calculator. Sorry, guys. Three divided by one hundred. Take the natural log of that. Divide by forty. So I get a k value of point zero two seven seven. Yeah, we'll leave it at that. And that is one over minutes. Okay, so now that we have our k value here, now we can find out the exact amount of time for our half life. So again, for half-life, we have one half of the material. Now you can make that 50 grams. I just make it a little easier here. Um, I want to find out what my half-life amount of time is, so I'm going to rearrange the variables here. I'm going to put that down there. Now again, I'm carrying my negative. So there I have my value in the calculator. So natural log of 0.5 divided by answer. Oops. Sorry, guys. Calculator's acting up here. So 25, all right, so 25 minutes is my half-life amount of time. Okay, so to find out how many half-lives I've run through, well, at 33 grams, I had 40 minutes. My half-life time is 25. So the number of half-lives, well, I've gone 40, divided by 25, and that equals 1.6. So I've gone through just a little over one and a half half-lives. Kind of a strange question, but yeah, it'll work. Um, yes, you could have used the other equation, but I guarantee it would have taken a lot longer to use that other one that we had in the first one. All right, example number three. Uh, how much time has elapsed if a substance with an initial mass of 242 grams currently has 24.2 grams, and the substance has a half-life of 5.25 days? Oh, that's kind of neat. All right, so we have the half-life amount of time. Um, so what we should do is find out what our K is, if we know what our half-life amount of time is. So let's find out what K is. So natural log 0.5 over 1. Again, half of the material. So if you want to use 242 grams down here for that, that's fine. Just realize that it's 121. Um, I have my half-life amount of time, which is... 0.25 days, and that will give me my K. So let's type that in. Excuse me. But. Okay, so my K is 0.132, and that is 1 over days. All right, so now that I have my K value, now I can do a lot of things. All right, so it wants to know how much time has elapsed. So now I'm going to plug in those values. So I have 24.2 grams, 242 grams. I hope I have room down here. Oh, boy. And let's plug in our K. That will give us our amount of time. So 0.132. That's right there. So let's see here. Natural log. Oops. Natural log of 24.2 divided by 242. That's actually 0.10. Didn't have to do that. Divided by negative answer. 17.44.
All right, so again, when working both of these problems out, example number two and example number three, the first thing that you have to do is find your K, especially if you know a couple things. I don't know if I still have this up here. Yeah, I do. So up here, um, I did not know my half-life amount of time, but I had to find the K. I also knew that I had 33 grams from a 100 gram sample, so and it took 40 minutes for that to get to that point. So this was the amount that was remaining, the 33 grams, and it took 40 minutes for that 100 gram sample to go from 100 to 33 grams. So I had to find my K. Once you have your K, man, you can do all kinds of things with a problem. So find your K first if you're using that type of problem. And I erased the other one. So find your K, especially if you're given a half-life amount of time. So in this problem here, we knew what our half-life amount of time was. So, and if you want to, you could have used 100, 140, or I'm sorry, 121 grams. In other words, you could have gone 121 grams over the 242 grams. And again, I'm willing to bet you that this value is the same as that value. So your call, um, kind of neat. Also, do I really need to put that one in there? No, but if I didn't put the one there, I think a lot of you'd start freaking out. So find your K and then you should be able to answer the question. All right, take a look at the second example or second video here. And again, I hope this has helped. And if you have any questions, by all means, don't hesitate to ask.